Welcome to the second part of the module on Java Concurrency Mechanisms. Now that we've explored the basics of Java Concurrency in Part 1, this part delves deeper into the structure and functionality of Java threads. Even if you're already familiar with Java threads, you may learn something from this video, since we discuss various thread implementation aspects of the Android software stack. A thread is a complex piece of software that interacts with other hardware and software entities. To get a bird's eye view of these interactions, the state machine on this slide depicts the key states of a thread during its life cycle, which are documented in the link at the bottom of this slide. Although you don't need to know all the details to program Java threads effectively, we'll walk through each state to help you better understand a thread's behavior and interactions. When a Java program creates a thread object, it's initially in the new state. After the program calls the start method on the thread, the state machine transitions to the runnable state. When the Android Linux scheduler selects this thread to execute, it transitions to the running state, at which point the Java virtual machine invokes its run hook method to start executing user-provided code. If this user code calls sleep or other timed operations, the state machine transitions to the timed waiting state for the designated period of time. When this waiting time elapses, the thread becomes runnable again. After the thread scheduler starts running the thread, it might attempt to access a guarded resource such as a synchronized method or block protected by a lock, which will transition the thread to the block state if the lock is not available. When the resource is obtained, the thread becomes runnable again. After the scheduler starts running the thread, it may become to a point where it wants to wait on a condition variable, causing the state machine to transition to the waiting state. When another thread notifies this condition variable, the thread again becomes runnable. Finally, when a running thread's run method returns, the thread is terminated and its resources are released by the Java virtual machine. The link at the bottom of this slide contains a UML state chart visualizing and summarizing all these states. The two most fundamental phases of a Java thread's lifecycle involve starting and stopping it. So we'll examine these phases in the remainder of this video since they raise some interesting implementation issues. We'll start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. When start is called on the thread object, the Java virtual machine allocates the resources needed to execute the thread and then calls its run hook method. Many steps occur at the Java middleware, virtual machine, and operating system layers to make all this happen. Again, you don't need to understand all these details to program Java threads effectively, but the following discussion will help you appreciate what the Android software stack is doing on your program's behalf. The source code files containing each implementation step are shown at the bottom of each slide. When a program invokes the start method on a thread object, it's actually invoking the start method of the underlying Java thread class, which in turn calls the VM thread create method, which triggers several other calls to Java native interface and Dalvik internal methods that ultimately invoke pthread create, which is a standard POSIX function that interacts with the Linux kernel to create a runtime stack and other pthread resources. We skip these kernel steps in our analysis. The interp thread start function is passed to pthread create, which then invokes this function in the context of the newly created thread. Interp thread start calls the Dalvik internal DVM call method, which subsequently invokes the thread object's run hook method to execute the user defined code. Now that we've covered how threads get started and run, let's cover the other end of their life cycle, where we bid them farewell. Just like the classic animated film, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, it's often easier to set things in motion than it is to shut them down. In particular, other than returning from run, there's no built-in safe method for stopping a Java thread in Android. The stop method has been deprecated for the reasons described in the link at the bottom of this slide. Therefore, if your thread performs long-running operations, you should ensure that they can stop voluntarily. One way to stop a thread is to use the standard Java interrupt method to post an interrupt request to the thread as described in the link at the bottom of this slide. For example, the code on this slide creates a new thread T1 that performs long-running processing in a loop. If this code later wants to stop T1, it calls T1's interrupt method. Thread T1 must check periodically to see if it has a pending interrupt request. When a thread is interrupted, certain blocking operations such as wait, join, sleep, and IO operations on an interruptible channel will automatically return and the thread will receive an exception. The link at the bottom of this slide examines the Java thread interrupt mechanism in more detail. Another way to instruct a thread to shut down is to use a stop flag. 
The My Runnable implementation in this slide contains a volatile Boolean flag called running that's initially set to true. The link at the bottom of this slide describes how the Java volatile type qualifier enforces a global ordering on reads and writes to a variable so it can be used correctly in a multi-threaded program. My Runnable also defines a stop me method that sets running to false. Finally, the run method checks running periodically to see if the thread has been instructed to stop. This solution is lighter weight than the interrupt method we discussed earlier, but it's not as powerful since it isn't integrated into the Java virtual machine and thus won't wake up blocked operations. Both solutions we've examined for stopping threads require the threads to cooperate by checking periodically to see if they've been instructed to stop and voluntarily shutting themselves down if so. Although this approach can be tedious, it's the recommended way of stopping Java threads. In summary, Java threads are implemented using various mechanisms provided by the lower level layers of the Android software stack. There are a number of good books on Java concurrency mechanisms you should consider reading. In addition to explaining how to create, manage, and use Java threads, these books also cover key patterns and best practices of programming multi-threaded software in Java.